What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back here again with another video. So, this episode of SmackDown, in my personal opinion, may be one of the best SmackDowns of 2024 so far this year. This SmackDown was fantastic. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to uh, do the live stream reactions with you guys on the, the main page, on the Inner Clutch page. I wasn't really feeling too well earlier, and to be honest with you, I'm not even really at 100%, but... I am feeling a little bit better. I was watching the show laying down in my bed, just, you know, tweeting with y'all on Twitter, man. And I was definitely enjoying this show. And I wanted to at least talk about everything that just really happened and what we may be in store for for the rest of the summer and the rest of this year. Because this SmackDown was a must watch. And I'm glad I was able to at least check it out. And uh, this was fantastic. This was truly, truly fantastic. So, SmackDown was in Chicago. Shout out to everyone that was in Chicago tonight. Y'all showed out. Y'all brought the energy the entire show. Love what y'all were doing in Chicago. Usually when WWE goes to Chicago, they usually show out. And tonight was no different. It was packed house. Started off the show with CM Punk. Crowd going crazy. All you hear CM Punk chants ringing throughout the arena. And basically, Punk was saying he was talking about pressure he was talking about pressure of individuals saying they're gonna win the big championship in their hometown and how much pressure it takes to actually do that and i, I like what he was saying here he even brought up you know many years ago at money in the bank when he had you know the pressure was on him to win the wwe championship from john cena one of my favorite wrestling matches of all time and the pressure he had on his shoulders to actually win that match against John Cena and walk out Chicago with the WWE championship. So I like how he brought that up and he was like, some people can't handle the pressure and drew and he made very great points. He said, I was going to do everything in my power to destroy, to to end Drew McIntyre's career. I didn't think it was going to be this easy, but I was going to do everything in my power to make your life a living hell. I said that, and I meant that, and that's what happened. So, the crowd's loving this. This was great. Love CM Punk standing on business, basically saying, you couldn't handle the pressure. You brought this on yourself. It is what it is, right? Cool. You kicked me when I was down, so now I'm kicking you while you're down. Cool. Then... All of a sudden, you hear Paul Heyman come out. And this was really cool because we hadn't really seen too much interaction with Paul Heyman and CM Punk on screen. So to see this, the history between these guys, this was great. Definitely brought us back down memory lane. And Paul, he, he, you know, he came out there nervous. But essentially, Paul came out there to let him know that Solo is Solo and the Tongans are coming out there and if he doesn't leave they're going to try to attack him and paul he's just he's not looking good even cm punk like you good bro like you don't really look so well like what's going on and paul's like look man i i i need i need to ask a favor from you like i'm concerned you really need to get out of here you're not even medically cleared yet they're gonna try to murder you and then that's when solo and the tongans come out and basically, Solo was on some, hey, CM Punk, when you on SmackDown, you basically got to check in. That's literally what it is. Check in with us, acknowledge us, and we may be gracious enough to let you on our show. And CM Punk, being CM Punk that he is, he was like, look, look, I acknowledge that we got some Uso wannabes behind you and a fake-ass tribal chief in Solo Sokoa. I acknowledge that. And then he asked Paul Heyman, he like, what was that? What was that favor that you wanted? He's like, when you leave, can you please take me with you? Paul Heyman wants out. He wants out of this whole bloodline situation. He doesn't want to have anything to do with these niggas no more. He wants to leave. And you can see Solo and them looking at him like, really? That's how you feel? Okay. So, of course, there was about to be a brawl in Sue, and that's when Cody came out there to even the playing field, and he had uh, brought some bats with him. So, at that point, Cody picks up the mic. He's like, look, man, I've already beaten one tribal chief. 
I can definitely beat another one. So we leave everybody in the back, just me versus you tonight. And he's like, all right, done deal. Cool. So we cut to the back. This is later on in the show. CM Punk leave, everybody leaves. Later on in the show. We cut to the back. And first and foremost, I want to make mention that there's a whole bunch of JAG security around ringside and in the backstage area because of what happened on Monday Night Raw with the Wyatt, um, with the Wyatt faction. So people were on high alert. So I did like that attention to detail. But we're in the back. You got Grayson Waller being interviewed, and then Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano are talking. You know, kind of instigating some stuff, saying you're really not Austin Theory's friend. Boom, 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 boom. And then all of a sudden, you hear they're in front of this huge garage door, and you hear some banging. So I'm thinking maybe it's the Wyatt faction trying to get inside. That's what, initially what I thought. But then they raised up the gate, the garage gate. And you see CM Punk bloodied on the floor. And you see Drew McIntyre standing over him. Such a beautiful visual. The crowd was booing this guy. And not only was he bloodied and laid out. He picked up CM Punk. Carried him. Fireman carried him all the way to the entrance area. Threw him on the ground. Did the traditional CM Punk pose. Where he's about to say it's clobbering time. Crowd giving him nothing but booze, blood everywhere. And then he takes a bracelet from him. And somebody had mentioned on Twitter, it's a bracelet that AJ is an AJ and Larry bracelet. Uh, I believe Larry, his dog, and AJ, his wife. So I guess he made a bracelet, you know, for them or whatever. The two things that he loved in this world. And the fact that Drew took it off and then put it in his pocket. Oh, it's up. It's up. You know CM Punk is going to crash out to get that from him. Oh, my God. I can't wait. Then uh, Nick Aldis comes out there. Other security officials come out there. And then Drew even pushes Nick Aldis. I'm like, oh, this is so good. He's crashing out. I love to see it. This was fantastic. You knew Drew was going to attack him when he was at home. It only made sense to get his revenge that way. And he bloodied him up. That was fantastic. This was so good. This is why I say Drew winning the championship was not the best decision. He needed to lose because now we're getting something and it's getting really, really personal now. You know CM Punk's going to win and get that bracelet from him. And he's going to try to murder him. I cannot wait. They put him on a uh, stretcher and they carted him out of here. We got to see what he's going to say on Monday Night Raw. It's going to be fantastic. This is going to be good. I cannot wait. Oh, my God. This feud is it's easily becoming, if not already, the best feud WWE has put on since damn near like WrestleMania. Probably the best feud all year. And the year's not even done. I mean, it's, it's going to be in contention for one of the best feuds all year. And they haven't even had a match with each other yet. Fucking fantastic. The Drew Crash Out Tour, I'm all for it. CM Punk's going to be on his Crash Out Tour too soon, so I can't wait. So, this show just had a a really big feel all night long. Hell, we even got a little teasing of what may become with uh, Bianca. Uh, Bianca was in her um, triple threat qualifying match for the Money in the Bank. So, Bianca hits the KOD on B-Chin, and then... As she's about to go for the cover, uh, Chelsea Green ends up, you know, getting her and then throwing her out the ring. And then Chelsea gets the, the pin for the one, two, three. She stole the victory. And Bianca was right there. And the reason why I wanted to make mention of this because I think we're starting to see the downfall of Bianca. Because I do think, I think next week, Nia, uh, not Nia, um, Jade's supposed to be in her match, her triple threat match to see who's going to win. Uh, money in, uh, qualifying match to see who's going to be in the Money in the Bank ladder match for the women's side of things. And I think, I think Jay's going to win and it's going to cause some jealousy there. Jay's going to get the job done and it's going to cause some jealousy there. So I, I'm, I'm liking what they're doing here. They're just planting seeds. But once again, Bianca wasn't able to get the win here. She was that close. But if Jay gets her win, question is what's going to happen there. So. Love what they're doing here. And like I said, this SmackDown just felt very important. And we got to talk about, obviously, 
the last segment. So, Cody Rhodes is out there getting ready for his one-on-one, one-on-one match with Solo. And Paul is talking to Solo in Gorilla. And he's like, look, what you're doing, this is not right. When I talked to Roman before he got on his jet, he said, CM Punk is off limits because of our history or how he has respect for me. CM Punk is off limits. And to keep Cody in check, so when he comes back, then, you know, we'll, we'll, Roman will be able to, you know, get the championship back. And then that's when uh, Solo said, look, I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I hate to say this. But Roman Reigns, he isn't coming back. And I love this because Paul's like, wait, what? What do you know? That can't be. Paul doesn't even know what to truly believe. And I love the fact that Solo's like, no, nah, he's not coming back. It's over. I'm your tribal chief. And that's just what it is. So they go out to the ring. And this essentially was a none match. Because I want to say maybe two, three minutes within the match, uh, the, the, the Tongas come out there and they pretty much attack Cody. And, you know... Solo gets disqualified. We knew we knew there was going to be something was going to happen. It wasn't going to end in a traditional fashion. So that's when Randy and um, Kevin Owens come out there to even up the odds. And now they have Solo cornered. And Solo's begging. He's like, please, please don't do this, please. And I notice, I'm like, Solo's begging for a reason. This is not characteristic this is not his character he's not gonna beg like this unless he has something up his sleeve and he did and jacob fought too oh my god they finally pulled the trigger jacob fought too comes out there and destroys everyone i mean packs up everyone samoan i want to say uh it was a samoan drop to kevin owens on the steel steps and then he damn near tackled Randy Orton through the... I mean, he did tackle Randy Orton through the barricade at ringside. And then he packed up Cody. Cody was trying to fight, but it was too much for him. Packed up Cody, put him on the announce table. Jacob Fatu went to the ringside and hit a beautiful splash from the top rope all the way to the announce table, bouncing off Cody, and Cody got packed up. Holy shit, Chance. They actually did it, bro. Jacob Fatu is in WWE. Holy shit. And what's interesting, and I don't know if y'all noticed this. When Jacob got in the ring, he put the ones up with Solo. Tama Tonga and Tonga Loa, they seemed confused. Like they didn't, it's like they didn't know he was going to be a part of this. They seemed very confused. And then they both, they looked at each other and they both put the ones up. I don't know if y'all paid attention to that. Just, it was just very confusing. They didn't seem like they were on the same page. All I know is, this was a great episode of SmackDown. I can't wait to see how things play out. I can't wait to see what Roman's going to say and do when he gets back. I, I do feel like we are, we're in this situation now where, Things are really getting, things are heating up with this bloodline, this new bloodline situation. And now that they have Jacob Fatu, oh my God, bro. Th this is about to be great. This is about to be fantastic. I mean, they're planting little seeds there just with him being there because the Tongas didn't look like they knew he was going to be a part of that. So I don't know if that was intentional. Maybe at some point, maybe Jacob Fatu ends up leaving this bloodline when Roman comes around and maybe joins up on Roman's side. Who knows? And I still think The Rock is pulling all the strings here. Either way, the bloodline story just got that much more interesting with Jacob Fatu being there. Um, the story right now with CM Punk and Drew, uh, Drew McIntyre, fantastic. The potential seeds that they're planning with Bianca Belair going heel, looking forward to that. They got a lot of stuff right here, man. They 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 have a lot of stuff to work with, and it seems like this summer, heading into the fall, we're in for a treat, man. Comment down below. Let me know. Did y'all enjoy this episode of SmackDown? Let me know what was your favorite part of the show. But I appreciate all the love and support. 
Roton, 50k, and I'm still going to be the YouTube wrestling champion world. Appreciate you kicking with me. See you on the next one. Peace.